So what is least squares estimation? And it often helps to start by thinking of an example. And here's a data set of a parameter y, perhaps the temperature or financial forecasting, whatever. And it's here plotted against another parameter, let's say, for example, days of the week. So we're measuring the temperature over days of the week and we get these data. And we'd like to fit something to this data to find out what the general trend is. So let's say we're going to fit a straight line to this data. And the straight line might go somewhere through here. We'd like to find an equation for that data. How are we going to, for that straight line? How are we going to do that? Well, of course, we can uh, work, write down an equation in terms of the y crossing and the gradient. So let's call the y crossing b0 and the gradient b1. So now let's write down an equation for each of the data points in our data set in terms of the straight line. So now for the ith data point, we have yi equals the equation for the line, which is b0 plus b1 di plus this disturbance term here, the ni, which is the distances away from the straight line. Okay, so find b0 and b1 for the best slope and the best y crossing. And we're going to do that with least squares. And the first step of doing that is to write down something called a residual. So here we've got the concept that we're going to take y, the measurement, the vertical measurement, minus a function of the x-axis and the parameter beta. And I've put beta here with an un a tilde underneath it to indicate that this is a vector of elements b0 and b1. But this is a more general way of writing it for the least squares. So you can see that this is an error term because it's yi minus this function. In our case, the function is b0 plus b1 di. Okay, And so what you're left with is actually this disturbance term. We're going to call it the residual. Okay, and now in least squares, we are going to minimize, that's the least, the square of the residual. And that's what we're going to do. Now, just before we do that, I'm going to write down another example of another equation, um, just to show that it's more than just fitting data to data curves. Uh, let me write down an equation here as more general equation. Y, which is a vector in this case, I'll just explain that just in a minute, equals H, which is a matrix, so I'll put two lines underneath it, times X, which is a vector, plus N, which is this disturbance term. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to call it noise. So this is a more general matrix version. And we tend to use this notation when we're looking at communication systems, for example. So I'll just briefly say that in digital communications. When does this apply? Well, uh, if X is a vector, if you have multi-antenna communications where the base station and the terminal, whether it's a, a handset, a mobile phone, or a laptop, if both ends there are multiple antennas, then X is a vector, which says the data symbol of each antenna, and Y is a vector, which is the data symbol received on each receive antenna. And H is a matrix of all the different propagation paths between those receive and transmit, transmit and receive antennas. So this is one example. Uh, it also applies in communication systems for uh, inter-symbol interference channels, uh, and also for CDMA channels. And there's, if you're interested in the digital communications, there's links in the description below this video which explain a lot more about this equation. But I just wanted to write this one here. In this case, uh, just like over here, but this is a vector version where the general challenge is uh, you're given, in this case, you're given the channel and H, the matrix H, and you'd like to find the input symbols X. You want to know what data was sent to you. That's the least squares. We're going to use least squares to solve that. And I'll just quickly show how this over here fits into this system here. So uh, here we've got YI in this form here, but I can rewrite that in a matrix form. So here is Y, so if I'm drawing it from over here, this is Y as a matrix. I'm going to put all the elements of from this here into a vector. Uh, so y is a vector, uh, and then the beta, which is a vector, as I said, b0 and b1. In this case, there's only two parameters. It's a 
it's a two by one vector, so that's beta here, uh, plus the noise as a vector. And what's this matrix? What's the equivalent of the channel matrix over here? Well, here you can see for Y1, it equals B naught plus B1 DI. So we've got one lot of B naught plus D1 lots of B1. Okay, and for Y2, likewise, it's one lot of B naught plus D2 lots of B2. So you can see the matching up. This is just a matrix way of writing this equation, stacking all the I elements in that vector. And so therefore this here can be written as a matrix D with a vector B, exactly the form that I've written over here. I'm just going to use this notation for the rest of the derivations in this, in this video. Our challenge is to find an X, I'm going to put a hat on the top of it because it's an estimate of our unknown vector x, in the communications case, which I think is, makes a lot of intuitive uh, sense, x is the data that's being sent to us. That's why we want to learn it. Okay, so it's being sent to us through a channel and we're receiving it with y. The least squares estimate is given by the argument that minimizes uh, the following function. It's the residual function. So in this case, it's y minus h, which is a matrix, times x, uh, which is our unknown, and we're going to, again, minimize over all the possible values of x. So we're minimizing over all the possible values of x, and we're taking the magnitude of this and squaring it, because this is the least squares. Okay, so this is the residual in this more general case, where it's uh, vectors and matrices. This is the residual. We're taking the magnitude and squaring it, and we're taking the value of x, which minimizes, so the argument that minimizes this function. That's least squares. So let's write that out and find out what the answer is in this case. We can rewrite this magni magnitude here as y minus hx transposed times y minus hx. Okay, so I'm keeping those underscores there just to remind ourselves that these are vectors and matrices. Uh, and we've got to take the derivative of this with respect to the vector x. Uh, and we've got to have that equal. So what does that have to equal now? We're taking the derivative. In order to find the minimum, we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. But let's just think about the dimensions here. So this now is a scalar. So this is a scalar here. Um, we, this is a row vector because of the transpose. It's a row vector times a vector, which gives a scalar. When you take the derivative of a scalar with respect to a vector, you get a row vector. So this is going to equal uh, a row vector. I'll, I'll draw that as zero as a vector, but with a transpose. Okay, so this is a row vector that you get from taking this derivative. Okay, so now let's see uh, what that is going to equal. So I've, I've written it out here, uh, just the derivative term. So with that, we just multiply out all the terms. We get this function here. So how do we now take the derivative of this? Don't forget, this is a scalar. We always need to remember that's a scalar. So because it's a scalar, any of the terms, you can take the transpose and they equal the same value because it's a scalar. So this term here, and this term here are actually the same value. So we can take the transpose of this function here, of this one, this term here, and we'll see that it equals exactly the same as this. So we take the transpose, put it together, and we get minus two of y transpose h x. And I've just dropped the subscripts here just for notational simplicity. This term here does not depend on the x, so this can disappear. So now we've got ddx of this term plus this term that we had here. Now, how do we work out the derivative? Well, the derivative of this term is clear. So the derivative of this term is minus two y transpose times h. Uh, that's fine. And that is a row vector, which is what we need uh, here to satisfy the, the requirement when we take a derivative with respect to a vector. Now, what's the derivative of this one? Well, it often confuses people, so I've written it out for us. So let's look at the general case here. This is x transpose times a matrix times x, and I've just drawn that out here in its general form where I've put the matrix A here, where the matrix A equals, in our case, equals h transpose h. Okay, so these are vectors, oh, sorry, matrices. Okay, so I've just drawn a general case here with the general A. Okay, I've called it alpha. 
Okay, now I just expand out these terms. If I've just done it in a two by two case, but of course it generalizes, but just let's look at the two by two case. So we've got x1 times a11 plus x2 times a21 and so on. Okay, so now we've got these two elements times x1, x2 vector. This is a row, that's a vector. Okay, now we can expand that out again and we get these terms here. Now we have, of course, don't forget this is now a scalar and it's obviously clearly a scalar. So now we need to take the derivative of this with respect to x1, and we get this term here, and the same thing now for x2. Okay, so we've got the derivative with respect to x1, the derivative with respect to x2. These are the two elements of our row vector. Now let's look in here and see in this particular case, because A, our A matrix, has this form, it's important to note that it is symmetric. So because, of its, because A is made up of H transpose H, in our case, A is a symmetric matrix. So A21 equals A12. So this term here, this term is the same as that term. And the same in this second one here, A21 equals A12. So this term is the same as that term. So this is actually, or well, this one here is actually, can be rewritten as two times X2 times uh, A21, and this one can be written as two times X1 times A12. And if we look here, back here, we see that row vector there is exactly what we've got now from these two, except multiplied by two. So now I can write down here um, D alpha DX, which is a vector, equals two times X transpose times A the matrix A, okay? So this is the, a bit of working that gets us down to this expression here. So this is the derivative of alpha with respect to X. This was alpha over here, uh, putting those terms back in, putting A equals H transpose H. We now get over here equals plus two, and now it's the X hat because this is the uh, value of X that is maximize, oh, sorry, minimizing the function here. So we've got two X hat transpose, because we had X transpose here, times A, which is H transpose H. And this has to equal the zero uh, row vector. Okay, so we can add this to both sides, uh, divide by two, and uh, take the transpose of both sides, and now we can see it gives us X hat equals H transpose H to the minus one times H transpose Y. And this is our least squares estimate of the vector X. Okay, so again, in the communication scenario, X was the unknown data that was transmitted and H was the channel, which you assume that you've measured and you know the channel. Uh, and Y is the measurements that you've made at the receiver. Then you've got your measurements Y and you can multiply by this matrix here to get least squares estimates of the data X. But of course, it's not just for data communications. This system over here also holds because this also has a matrix representation. But this is the least squares result, the least squares estimate of the unknown parameter vector. In this case, it was X. Over here, it would be beta. And you just replace the terms, you'll get exactly equivalent expression. Um, interesting to note, we sometimes call this the pseudo inverse. Uh, because uh, this is, uh, if we were to take y and simply multiply by the inverse of h, then we would get x. But h is not always invertible. So that matrix h may not have linearly independent rows and columns. If that's the case, and that depends on your data and all of those things, of course, of course, the channel. If that's the case, then you can still invert, you can always invert h transpose h. You can always do this inversion. So when you multiply by this matrix, instead of just H inverse, which you may not be able to do, you can always find this matrix is called the pseudo inverse. That comes about from the least squares optimization. So hopefully this video has helped you to understand least squares estimation. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check out the description below where you'll find a web page where there's a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.